Oh, a lot more than that. That much? More than that. That's it. That much. Over two kilograms. Out of balance. And if that looks a ridiculous thing to do, I'm going to spin it up again and then turn it upside down. Quite a brute to take upside down. Up to the marks. There we are. <laughs> when you have seen that, you have seen something you have not seen before. Again, there was the same out of balance, two kilograms. These gyros are getting larger, and of course, like electrical machines, as they get larger, they get better. Now, what was very interesting about that experiment, I'm about to show you. I'm going to modify this gyro by putting in a second pivot point. I screw that into there, and then the gyro into the end, and now the gyro has two alternative pivots. It can either pivot about there or about there. Okay? Which do you think it will elect to do? Bill? The gyro always knows the answer. Do that. It's never going to stay out there, is it? Be stupid to expect it to stay out there. Stupid, was it? Well, what about that one? Let's just have a look at what we've just done. The last thing I did was to take a gyro with a pivot there, another pivot there, and then the wheel. And we found that, of course, it elected for that to come down there like that and the gyro to stick out there because by doing so there was no change in the axis of spin of the gyro, no precession necessary. Why then did that work? Because there is a bench overhung. Here was an aluminium plate. The tower was completely outside the end of the table. A pivot there. The wheel there and the second pivot there. This thing had the, the ability, if it wished, to do this. And still remain with the gyro horizontal. Why did it not make use of the ability to go like that, with the tower there and the gyro still horizontal? We shall see. This is the most remarkable experiment I think that I've ever done. I'll balance that, first of all, like a seesaw. So there is a balance point. When I take this out here, of course, then the balance point is uh, upset. It should tip down. We know that given the opportunity, it's going to do this if it can, but now we've balanced it, and we've balanced it about its centre of mass. So that if this gyro transfers its mass centre to the pivot, it should stay balanced. The question is, will it?
Let those who say I cannot make a body appear lighter than it is come and pull holes in that one. We shall proceed from larger gyros to still larger gyros. And this one, Bill, I think it was. This one weighs getting on for 15, 16 pounds. And uh, we've got some spots on it so you can see its speed. And we're going to anchor it from the roof, chain it like a dog. They get rather big. Now, I'm going to put a retort stand under what I believe to be the centre of support. It's a bit difficult when the thing doesn't float. It's right this way. How's it this way? It's about it. It gives you a general guide as to where the pivot point is. Right, oh, they'll spin her up. When he hands this one to me, it's quite a handful. It has a mind of its own, and you want to turn it round, it says it wants to go back. There's a lot of energy in this wheel. Now, we are now giving it hardly any fetters whatever. It's only tethered to the roof, it's got no gimbal rings, it can go any way it pleases, it must surely want to rotate with its centre of mass over the point, under the point of support. Cranky yeah. monk. The jabber what isn't the only monster. Over the centre of mass, over the centre of support, there it goes. What will it do? <laughs> 2001, a space odyssey. No less. Note Notice the angle it makes with the horizontal. It's tipped down a bit. In a moment, you'll see it rise again. Now it's coming in on a shorter orbit, and the wheel axis is now beginning to tilt upwards. It is going to maintain its centre of mass on a horizontal plane, even though as a conical pendulum it appears to have raised. Now it's actually going out again, and it will perform a number of these orbits from an outermost orbit to an innermost, and it reminds one of an electron, and it reminds one of an electron jumping from orbit to orbit, because they're said to spin also. If we have the patience, we'll see it come in again and rise up again, and the gyro wheel is slowing by its own pivot friction, and it is remarkable how low a speed you can get and still have the gyro staying horizontal when it gets close in. It is liable to get settled into a very definite orbit like this, which is the time when I move in and say, is he going back? You think it'll do it itself. It seems we've got rather settled. I'll just disturb it a trifle. Come on. I didn't disturb it enough. Go in. No. What I wanted him to do, no, he won't do it now, I'll have to help him. He's running down, he's running very slowly. But what is surprising, you begin to see the spots now because he's only running very slowly, and I'm going to slow it still more because of our lack of time. Slow it right down till you can really see those spots, and then say, will you still maintain that that shall be your axis of spin? And he says, yes, of course. Look at the rotational speed. It'll soon be down to the stage it's doing one revolution of precession per revolution of the rotor. And that is a most incredible machine. Something that you can try on a small scale with a toy gyro like this. Don't ever attempt it with this size because uh, it is very lethal indeed. Well, would you like to uh, kill that one? Right, we go from bigger to bigger still. 
This time I call for a volunteer. I shouldn't if I were you. I've got a very specially trained astronaut for this. Come on, Dennis. Here's our ch chest defeating champion, beating the masters once again. When we stand him on here, I can turn him round with this handle from here. I can spin him round on that platform. So they're going to strap him in very, very tightly. Waist and shoulders. All right. And then we're going to spin up the biggest gyro of the day, which is here. This weighs 18 pounds. The shaft weighs 6 pounds. Would some strong fella like to come and try his strength? Try lifting that up with both hands at one end like that. Who's going to try? Come on. <laughs> All right, grab hold of the end. Okay? Whoa. <laughs> Heavier than you thought, isn't it? Yep. Try again. Now do it with both hands at one end. <laughs> You're never going to make it, boy. Right. Now, we're going to give this to Dennis, and we've spun it up to about 2,000 revs a minute. <laughs> and he's going to show you his feats of strength. Okay. Right. Nice and easy. Nice and easy first, Dennis. Take a good hold, that's it. Yeah. Get your hands further back, Dennis. You got it. Your hands further back. Pull your hands in. Well done. Slow it down. I can make him lower it. Or raise it. Look at that. Put your arms out, Dennis, if you can. <laughs> I'm going to shake this young man by the hand. He's got more courage than I ever had at his age. Because he knew... Now it's over, I can tell you, he knew that if he dropped that, it had enough energy that getting a good grip from the ground, it could have hurled itself 200 feet in the air. That was what he held. I'm doing this to warn you against doing demonstrations. We'll do that after this. I think it's more relevant. Can you bring in the... We're going to spin up a small gyro here. Up to about the same speed as we had with that, about 5,000 RPM. And then, spin it up with an airline. And then I'm going to drop it deliberately onto a rubber mat. Just to show you how much energy there is in that little thing there. And then you can imagine what that one had. Um, <laughs> Get it nice and flat against the car. Up a bit. Uh, Mr. Coates is going to try to catch it in a butterfly net. I had to bring butterflies in some way. Uh, right. Okay. Got it.